Ready to shoot. Last time I spent 30 days surviving in the Canadian Rockies, but now... Effective this Thursday morning, April 2nd, until April 30th, I am ordering all Maine people to stay at home. So this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge Maine Lockdown. Vision! I want you to catch sleep. Dear Diary, I'm down to my last rolls of toilet paper. Things are really getting bad here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do when it's snowing outside. The moss is a little frosty on the backside. I wonder what the Amish do for toilet paper. Maybe they knit their own? And then what do you do with it after? Has anybody told the Amish about the quarantine? And is there really any point in telling them that there's a lockdown? I'm pretty sure they already have some sort of rule about keeping six feet from each other. I guess it would really mess up some barn raising plans if you had to stay six feet away from each other. Well, it is another gnarly day out there it was raining all morning it's snowing now i spent the morning working in my office working on some videos and uh office work and now i feel like just plunking plunking doing nothing i i want to like bust out the ice cream i don't have and the popcorn i don't have and put on netflix and like binge watch another i don't know my goal for this 30 day survival challenge is not to do that, to do something new every day, something creative and something adventurous and, and work out and be healthier and create a better rhythm for my life. Waking up earlier, being more disciplined and, uh, and not the way I have been just spending, you know, filming a bunch of episodes and then I come back and I end up doing nothing but like editing for 20 hours a day and putting out videos and, and then it, uh, uh, just not following my ketogenic diet for the last year and be on it and off it and on it. I gained a bunch of weight back during this winter. So this is like, this is for me more than it even is for you guys, this this series right now. And uh, so in that vein, I fi figured out what to do today. I got a plan for tomorrow. I'm gonna build a smoker, a cold smoker and cold smoke my steak. Uh, I seen the Guggen, uh, Guga, Guga or whatever sous vide everything and he's got two channels and he he talked about smoking a steak and how long to smoke a steak for and it looks so good so i'm going to make a smoker that's big enough to be able to smoke fish and everything so when uh the alewife start running i can smoke a couple fish that way and be able to store up for myself food as uh as well as fun stuff like smoking some steaks maybe uh, get a deer this fall or a whole turkey cold smoke a whole turkey and then like grill it or something really unique. Maybe even smoke a woodchuck. I don't know about that. But today though, I pulled out an old slingshot that I hadn't finished. I thought I'd finish her up. It's pretty much almost done. I made this slingshot while I was making another one in a video for how to do a casting video. Um, and so I had heat bent the tines. I'll put the link below. Not a lot of people watched it because they're like, I don't need to know how to make a casting video, but it's three videos in one. It's how to make a successful YouTube video and how to be genuine and how to film and how to do all that stuff, but as well in the video to explain all that, how I'm filming things, I made heat bent uh, ash slingshots. These are a branch that was cut from my tree in the backyard and I climbed up to the top and cut off a branch and it had three slingshots on this long branch that could be made. So this is the second of them. And I roughed it out and oiled it and it didn't check and it didn't split and the heat bent parts survived. So I thought I would continue and finish it off today and shoot it. And that would be my fun thing to do for today. I don't really need to make any food. My fish head soup is still left from the other day. 
And I uh, thought while I'm whittling here, we'd talk about uh, the state of affairs. I also had to run out today to the post office. I'm not filming when I'm out and about because of people are getting crazy. Uh, while I was at the post office, I went in. It's a really tiny post office. The inner part of the post office is like nine foot by six foot. And I went in, somebody was already in that area, and I went in and I stood all the way to the back. And he's like, I'm gonna have to ask you to stand outside, Zach. And I went out, I'm like, did I miss something, like a note? I'm like, oh, there's no note. And I, they brought a note out right while I came in, it was my turn. And it turns out they've been having problems with people almost coming to blows because one person will be in that small area mailing their mail and then another person comes in and they stand as far back as they can from them but that person that's in the front turns around and gets all hostile and so they just made this new rule to to um you know just one person at a time through the doors and personally i think it's ridiculous not not that um social distancing does, isn't going to help it's going to slow things it will help. It's going to slow things down. But it is the most stupid campaign ever, as far as I'm concerned, because it so under-informs people about what is actually happening, because they're just saying social distancing, social distancing. And it's like, that's only one tiny piece of the puzzle. So people latch on to it and become all this state of fear. That's not what's you know going to prevent you from getting it. It's it's far more than that. I was talking to my parents today and they're taking full measures because uh, they worry that they might be at high risk after dad's operation recently and uh, nothing big, just a, um, like a little tear in his stomach muscle, you know, de dealing with that. But, you know, w while he's healing up from all of that and they don't need to uh, get sick and, uh, and my aunt and stuff that we still have contact with is high risk as well. And so they're being super cautious. They're washing their money when they come home. They wear masks at the store and rubber gloves. And um, I, my parents are ketogenic and they're doing far better at that than I have been this last year. They, they've lost all kinds of weight and I've been in and out of the diet and gaining all kinds of weight. It's ridiculous. Um, they're, now they're the picture of health and they're the ones bugging me that I gotta be more meticulous about my eating habits. And they're right. And that's what this is all about for this 30 day survival challenge for me too, is, is building better habits and finding something creative to do every day. But the, the thing that I find is ridiculous is because people are just latching onto the whole social distancing thing and, and getting mean, you know. Uh, I had a guy, we dropped a box when I was bringing everything over to Brandon's, my employees are all working from home and he's shipping all the slingshots and shovels and survival gear that we sell on the website. Um, shameless plug, FowlersMakeRoomMischief.com. We're still shipping and selling everything. Uh, so you can get slingshots and play around with them in your yard. We've got ammo, slingshots, the whole thing. And we had some ammo fall off the back of the trailer. The guy brought it over, dropped it off, and he was pulling out of my driveway as I pulled in. And on the box it said, I thought you might need this, it might be food. You know, like as if like people just drop food off the back of trailers all the time and like it's the end of days. And he can't, he turned around because he saw me pulling in, pulls back in. I walked over towards his video, uh, vehicle to thank him and he starts yelling at me, keep your distance, keep your distance. I was like 10 feet away. I was just going to walk up. I don't even know the guy. It's not like I'm going to walk up and lean on his window, you know, and like talk to him. And I was just going to like say thank you. I was worried about somebody hitting it. And, uh, and he's like, what was it? I was worried it might be food and you need that. I'm like, no, it was it's a product for our website. You know, and he's like, oh, geez, you know, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my goodness, throwing a fit. And I mean, that's the thing that concerns me the most is not the, the virus, but the reaction that people are having to this. I mean, these are the kind of reactions that cause people to do really ridiculously stupid, bad things to other people, you know, because of the state of fear and not understanding how it all works. If you want to be safe from it, then yes, social distancing uh, is a teeny, teeny part of it. But washing your hands, uh, wearing gloves, or wearing masks, I mean, it's, it's not... Uh, the stores are limiting it to you're only allowed to have a certain amount of people in the store, but they make you have a cart, which 
is ridiculous because then you have to touch the cart unless you're wearing gloves and full gear you know it's like you you risk catching being sick if somebody else was sick and touching it it's how many people pass through an area if you're going to the grocery store and you grab a box of cereal but the person before you grabbed um that box of cereal and decided oh wait no that that was plain cheerios i wanted the honey ones and they go back and you grab the plain ones and now you have contact with them and you go home you got to wash down every single one of your your packages and and all this stuff it's and so to get so fixated on one aspect of it all the point where you you're rude and uh and almost violence breaking out like they said at the post office where they're making it so only one person can come in because they've come so close to people you know just being nasty to each other and and coming to blows over you know this fear and social distancing fear is is ridiculous um i think it's if anything it's more harmful it'd be better to fully educate people as to you know how it all works um, for those of you that are informed, you're like, oh, duh, but, like, you know, the thing I've been seeing more than anything else is just, just pushing this social distancing down everybody's throats, as if that's the answer to the entire solution. Oh, this is going to be nice. This will be a fun one. I'm going to rig it up with a little tubing, just like I use for my frameless slingshot here and have it so it's a nice long draw It'll be fun to play around with something a little bit different than what i normally do this will be even a longer draw than my normal long draw i'll do some like can cuts and stuff personally i think it's gonna get worse not necessarily the virus that's still gonna travel and people are still gonna get it and things but the lockdown situation because how are they ever gonna lift it at the end of the month it's not the numbers of people that have it isn't going to slow down anytime soon. Um, there's, especially with, you know, people of essential services going around, which, you know, thank you for those of you that are watching that are essential services that are keeping our power on. Thank you very much. People that are, uh, the medical, uh, medical working in the medical world, you know, and helping while this is happening and putting yourself at risk. Thank you guys very much. My heart and hopes and prayers go out to you in this time. Our police officers, all the people that are keeping the lights on and uh, all the other essential things that need to happen. And, you know, even just working at the grocery store, washing down carts and, uh, and still being there to ring out food so that people can buy food. Um, I've been doing really good. I've only had to go to the grocery store uh, like one time because uh, I get fresh milk for the girls and stuff. Anyways, the lockdown, now that they officially said that, like, at the end of this 30 days, I don't see them lifting it. If anything, I feel like our government and state, maybe even federal too, on top of this, is probably just buying time so that they can set up a better plan of monitoring a harsher, a harsher lockdown. Like... It wouldn't surprise me to see that at the end of this 30 days, they say and do this exact same thing again. This worked so well and look at the evidence of how many people um, and how little it's spread and how it hasn't exponentially gotten worse. We're going to do it for another 30 days. And at some point, they're going to have, you're going to have to get, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't do this. Like at some point, you're going to have to file online as to how essential your trips are and have to drive around with a card of some sort, you know, like a, a green card in your front window because your essential services, like you go to work at the power company or you have permission to work at the grocery store and then there's a curfew on top of, uh, you know, and then you have your, your orange card for, you know, I'm going to the grocery store um, and like maybe even colors or numbers for the zones that you're supposed to stay in at some point because if it, I don't see how it can just how it can not get worse before it gets better. If it burns out and they find a cure before all that happens, maybe, but they can't very well lift the band at the end of the month. If anything, they have to make harsher, you know, harsher um lockdown 
and actually start finding people for being out and just to reinforce what they've already started. Because they can't say, okay, everybody go out and get it, do your thing. And if you think you're at risk, it's up to you to stay at home, which is what should have been done in the first pay place. Um, the legality of telling us that you're going to fine us for going out and about when we're doing what we believe is essential to our own life and liberties is ridiculous. Um, I just, I can't, I don't feel like that's legal at all. And whether it is dangerous or not um, for ourselves. All that being said, I am doing my best to uh, make zero trips to the stores if I don't need to, you know. Um, so living off of what I have here and the whole point of this 30 days is to try to see how much I can keep in my cupboard. We've been catching the fish, making fish head soup, making, you know, cooking the fish, doing stuff like that. I've only busted so far into one roast with the uh, corned beef with the cabbage and I ate that all last, this whole beginning of the series, I've just been eating that. Like, uh, I just finished that yesterday and now I have my my um, fish head soup with vegetables and I, I'll probably be able to eat that for, well, until I'm pretty darn sick of it, probably for like four more meals. Um, I still have bacon and eggs, I had those this morning. And, um, now my slingshot's done. Didn't take much to finish her off. I'll go put some uh, tubes on it, rig it up, and see if I can't do something fun with it. Maybe I'll cut a card, or um, since the matches didn't work so well last time, I'll uh, see how many hits it takes to cut a can in half with this or something fun. Let's do it. One of the advantages of being a single guy, you can whittle in your living room and nobody's there to complain about it. <laughs> All right, ready to shoot.
Hey Google, turn on the shooting range lights. Sure, turning the shooting range lights on. Start with a little can action. See if we can't cut this can in half. How many hits do, does it take to cut a can in half? This is a fun game to play if you're ever uh, up against a friend, you know, and two of you are shooting. See who can cut their can in half the fastest or with the, um, uh, the uh, least amount of hits, too, if you're playing by yourself. We'll do some ammo sorting. I'll grab some of that. Three eighths ammo sorted. It looks like one seven sixteen slipped down through somehow. Oh, there's nothing more satisfying than the sound of a can when you hit it with a slingshot. Let's see, new slingshot, shooting it a little bit differently. Now, if you decide to try to copy me, it takes special bands that I've custom made to shoot long like this. If you've bought a slingshot off my website, the bands aren't made to shoot that long. And it can be very dangerous because learning to do this is why I have holes in my windows and dings in all my walls and stuff like that. It tends to, when you draw back really far, or if you overdraw, you tend to tweak the pouch. They bounce off the frame or a finger and they go zipping off in different directions. I even scuffed myself in the cheek once. It wasn't bad, but man, it made me gun shy, slingshot shy for a little while. And uh, it, it took quite a bit of practice to learn to shoot like this. So do it at your own risk. I don't uh, recommend that you start out that way. And even now I shoot a lot of just short range slingshots for my aerial shooting. I find that long bands and stuff don't work well for that. Let's see what we can do. First try. Oh, shoots lower than usual. That's why. Boom. Wow, that's a great sound. What a great sound. I'm not finding this to be as accurate as my usual slingshot. The tubes feel a little bit slower. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of her. Maybe I spoke a little quick. This is starting to feel good. Wow, that can just does not want to to come in half. I I don't know. I can't tell what part of it's ripped and what part I have to hit. Oh, hanging by a thread now. Holy moly. My all time best is three shots for cutting a can. This is nowhere near that. There it is. Whew. That took a while. I almost feel like I got a workout in there. That was, I don't even know how many shots right there. Holy cow. That's a lot of shots. Maybe try something more accurate. It's one thing when you're shooting at a, a small target to hit small, but it's also another thing to feel your focus wander and not be able to narrow your focus. Aiming at a can, you start aiming at the whole can and you, you miss more often than not. And I, I don't know if it's this slingshot or um, I'm not being in the right mindset. I used to play pool and some days you play for money and other days you didn't. You gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to run. And count your uh, sitting at the table. Got one of these little snaps. Let's see if I can't hit that. They're only an inch long and oh thinner than a pencil, so this will be a test of accuracy. Tie it right onto this little piece of string. Oh. Well, I guess we'll have to test accuracy another time. 
apparently, the power's out. Huh, they don't usually lose power here in town. Ooh, I could shoot it in the dark. And then when it blows up, it'll be even cooler because it's in the dark. This is perfect. I don't have to quit. I just got a new challenge. So, new plan. All I have is the light from the camera, and I put a tea light down below the snap I was just setting up to shoot at, and I think I could just see it hanging above the tea light. So I'll hit that, that'll go boom, and then I'll shoot a second shot and put out the tea light, and that'll be the end of today's video. Lord bless me. Oh, this makes it twice as hard when you shoot in the dark. You can't see anything. You can't see where it goes. You can't be like, oh, I'm a little bit off. Readjust. Oh, second shot. Let's see if I can get the tea light. You still here? Go away. Go do something else. You can go watch my old videos. Ooh, spooky. Spooky. Why are you still here? You should be looking for the next video. Check out the playlist. You can see all the other series that we've done on this channel. Thanks for watching.